Hello and welcome to the Ross Cloud Podcast. I'm your host, Carl Ross Sr. And this platform was created to motivate and to inspire in hopes that you will become a better you. I'd like to give a shout out to everybody that's listening all over the world. Thank you guys for tuning in to the Ross Cloud Podcast. We really do appreciate it. Listen, we have a very special guest with us here on today. We have Miss Peggy Wells. How are you, Peggy? I'm well. I hope you are. Yes, I'm doing very, very well. Thank you again for gracing us with your presence here on the Ross Cloud Podcast. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. You're welcome. So, so Peggy, tell the folks uh, where you're from and what you do. Well, my name is Peggy Wells. I'm the founder and executive director of the Wells Center Incorporated for Women in Transition. I am originally from Charlotte, North Carolina. Oh, I've been right. in, well, I moved to Winston Salem back in 2004. Okay. Uh, with a passion to help women that have been incarcerated uh, in, the, in the criminal justice system. Right. So that's why I'm in this area. Okay, awesome, awesome, awesome. So how long you been up this way? How long you been in uh, Winston Salem? Would you say? Since 2004 until now, I don't know. That's 12, 13, wow, it's 12, 12, 13, 14 years. Almost 20 years. Yeah, oh, my God. Almost 20 years. Wow. So this is home. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you at home. Wow. Wow. I didn't know it's been that, I didn't know it's, it's been that long, but wow. I guess so. Wow. What was the journey like for you starting the transitional home, and what inspired you to do that? Well, uh, it's, it's a call from God. Sure. Um, I teamed up with this traveling team in Charlotte Mm -hmm. that went to jails and prisons on the weekends, and uh, we ministered there, and Mm -hmm. I just, uh, I was just a babe in ministry. I started ministry in 99. Okay, okay. Um, This lady comes to me, she said, do you want to go to the the jails and prisons to minister? Why not? Yeah, sure. um, Sure. So I jumped on the bandwagon and went to a men's prison down, somewhere down in uh, North Carolina. Okay. Um, did that, and I enjoyed it. Sure. And so we started sure. traveling every weekend to prisons. Yeah. And one day she said, Peggy, we, we're going to the women's prison. Wow. I said, we're going where? <laughs> she said, to the women's prison. I said, yeah. now I'm, I'm straight from the hood. Right. <laughs> but I had no idea that women was incarcerated. I got you. Mm-hmm. So we went to a, a women's prison. It was a large prison, and yeah. we had service in a big gymnasium. It was over 200 women in that service. Wow. Wow. And it really shocked me, and I was really shocked because I had no idea. Yeah. Um, and from there, we would go every weekend, and mm-hmm. as you go, the women would get comfortable with you. It sure. would be a group of eight of us. Sure. And one woman came to me, and she said, Miss Peggy, I'm getting ready to get out. Yeah. Do you have a place for me to go? Wow. No, yeah. I, I don't, you know, I'm, I'm preaching the gospel. Telling yeah. people how, that God's going to make a way and he's able to do all things. Yeah. But that was just talk. Yeah. Because when the question arose, can you help me? Mm. I'm like, no. So I was preaching a false doctrine because I had no idea that I was supposed to help her. Right. Um, so we went to another prison, women's prison, and the same thing, the same question arose. Mm. Arose, and I was like, and I got in the van. I said, I said God, why are these women singling me out? <laughs> why are they asking me? Yeah. If I have some place for them to go, am I yeah. missing something? Yeah. And the Lord began to speak and say, well, you're my hands. Mm. You're my feet. Mm. You're my voice. Yeah. You have to help them Yes. transition out of jail and prison. Absolutely. So from that day up until this day, it began to weigh really heavy on me mm. that that's my calling and that's my purpose. Yeah. Uh, and I was working on a job. I was I was working in Fort, uh, Fort Mill, South Carolina. Okay, yeah. And uh, I had been on that job for 10 years. Yeah. And the press to help these women became greater and greater. Mm. And one day I was at work. I said, God, I can't sit here any longer. I have to start moving forward to what you're calling me to do. That's right. Now, I had only a high school diploma. Mm. I'm in my late 30s. Um, and I called my father, who lives in Winston-Salem. I said, Dad... Yeah. Uh, God is calling me to help women come out of jail or prison. Wow. I, I say to tell people that God did it, that's not enough. Mm. I say people want to know what qualifies you to do what you're talking about doing. <laughs> do you have the education? Yeah. yeah. We have to be sensible in this thing. Some things, sometimes we go, oh, God did it, God did it, but we have to be sensible. Yeah. You know, things yeah. that, that make sense. That's right. 
That's um, right. So I moved up, moved to Winston Salem in 2004 to go to Winston Salem State University. Okay. And got my bachelor's degree uh, in 2007. I love it. And then uh, from there, I'm like, well, this isn't enough. This and and, and I, I am a believer because people say, well, once you start, you don't stop. Right. right. And that is the God having truth. <laughs> you don't stop. Right. So that bachelor's degree wasn't enough. I found out quickly. Yeah. That I still couldn't get people's attention about what I was talking about doing. Yeah. Because the level of education wasn't there. I got you. So and then I went. I was started going to. Uh, I enrolled to North Carolina A and T and UNCG. Yeah. They have a joint master's program of social work. Yeah, yeah. So I went and start. I did that. I, I uh, enrolled in 2013. I graduated 2015 and got my master's in social work. Got you. I am a licensed uh, clinical therapist. Mm. And I just graduated a couple of years ago from uh, get my master in divinity from uh, Hood Theological Seminary. <laughs> I love it. I love it. And I'm 58 years old. So Come if, on I can now. Do, if I could do it, anybody could do it. Anybody could do it. We're talking about a late bloomer. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. I'm grateful for God giving me that knowledge and been, that desire to go to school because yeah. I vowed once I got out of high school I ain't going nowhere y'all must be crazy <laughs> I think I had a GPA of 2.0 or something I like that you. in, in you was high done. school yeah. so, you know so but I yeah. learned a lot of things and I am grateful yeah I can I can really do I really appreciate the conviction that you felt though like how can I I'm almost it's almost like you were saying to yourself I'm being a hypocrite I'm preaching the gospel but Absolutely. I don't have any substance to help these people with uh, wh- where did that come from, Peggy? Like, where where did that come from? Or the conviction? Yeah, well, I, like, well, how how did you? Because everybody doesn't have that. It was just a, I mean, being asked a question. Yeah. And you tell him what God can do. Mm. That's just like a hon- a hungry man standing on the street saying, "I'm hungry." Oh, God will make a way. Hey, he need to see something. Yeah, but, <laughs> I'm hungry. But, but, but you're here. Yeah. What are you gonna do? Yeah. Yeah. Um, you're going to stop and buy this guy something to, something to eat, yeah. right? And yeah. feed him. Absolutely. And then you give him the gospel. You don't give a hungry man, try to give him the gospel, <laughs> and you ain't giving him nothing to eat in his stomach oh, growling. That's so practical. So, so same, so, yes. Yeah, so same scenario. Yes, yes. It's like, God, I'm telling these people what you can do, yeah. what you're able to do. Yeah. But then I'm leaving them hanging. Mm. So that's really not proof that you could do it. God right. uses people. That's right. To that's help right. other people to get where they need to be. Yeah. And that's the part that was missing. I really had to do a lot of reflection, mm. a lot of meditation to yeah. come to that. Yeah. You know, um, so that's what we are. Yeah. yeah. I love it. I love it. And I love that you took your time and answered that. And, and that's what I was looking for. I, I knew the answer to it, but I was able to go. You were able to go even deeper uh, you know, it was a divine moment you had. Yes. You know, it really was. Yes, sir. And I think that's so true. We we don't want to be hypocrites. We want to be able to do exactly what we say we can do. Yeah. If I'm if I'm saying this to you, then I should be able to fulfill absolutely that in the earth realm. Like yes. you said, God, these you know we're God's hands. Yeah, here and to do His work. So, yeah. uh, what were some of the challenges that you can say you faced? Um, uh, let's say this um, from the beginning to operating the home, and from practical and personal standpoints, the challenges? Personally, um, I have a diagnosis of systematic lupus. Um, I was diagnosed over 30 years ago, um, and I profess that God healed me from that. Mm -hmm. Um, Over the course of 30 years, I've only had one bad episode. so I'm, I, that's a challenge there, just my health. Yeah. It's been a challenge. Yeah. Um, but far as uh, um, the other stuff, like trying to get somewhere, or get someone to, to listen yeah. and to get indoors, that's been the hardest mm. thing for me. That's been the barrier to get people to hear yeah. um, what the story, or, hear, or see the vision. Yeah. And once people see the vision, they catch on. It's just getting getting in the door to get them to, to, to see it. Absolutely. So getting indoors, like the churches have been very difficult mm. uh, to get in. Wow. Uh, that is like a locked door, <laughs> which is which is really depressing. And sure. It, 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 it hurts that sure. the churches will not listen. Mm. Because we're talking about a population of women that have been unrecognized, ignored, and pushed to the side. Yes. Many of these women are mothers, mm-hmm. um, and they they need a helping hand. Yeah, 
And that's what we are supposed to be doing as people of God yeah. is to give people a helping hand, giving them a leg up. Yeah. Um, but the churches, uh, they have closed the doors. They don't want to hear it. Mm. And that's been the hard, that's been the most difficult barrier. I got you. Um, but going out to, to businesses and stuff like that, in the beginnings, all of this was so hard. Yeah. But I come to tell you, Mr. Ross, this is the season <laughs> where God have unlocked some doors. Uh, yeah. And I'm walking through doors like, I, I could not even dream of it. Absolutely. Uh, so doors are being open. I'm being able to walk in doors. I'm getting people's attention yeah. because uh, I'm screaming loud. Absolutely. And I won't go away. That's right. You know, so I'm getting on people's nerves. <laughs> you know, if you want something, you're going to work for it. Oh, you're not yeah. going to be passive and say, okay, no. well, well, whatever. But mm. now I'm not passive. Mm. I'm aggressive yeah. because I, I need to get what I need to you get. You need to get what and, you need to and get. And I'm trying to help these women. That's right. So that's been the biggest, is getting someone to listen, especially if they don't know you. Mm -hmm. If the community doesn't know who you are, yeah. it's going to be a barrier getting in. We don't know you. Yeah. You know, it's something you came, you dreamed last night and said you want to do it. It's a good idea. Yeah. But to get people, once I get people and I'm able to get in that door, I convince mm -hmm. them. This is a twenty. This has been twenty years in the making. Mm. I didn't dream it last night. Come on. And if it was up to me, I would have gave it up a long time ago. Come on, come on. But I because of you. what God have done, I can't give it you up. You can't give it up. You know, can't throw in the towel. Uh, that's that's such a powerful thing that you just said. And um, you know, I'm, I'm, it is it is my prayer that the folks that are listening that what you said because the the premise of our show is to help people become better through other people's stories. Uh, whether you're an entrepreneur, whatever it is that you're doing, you can say something that can inspire the next person. Because I think a lot of times people are looking at the glory, but they don't really know the story behind the glory. They just see the beauty of it. Yes. They see God in all of it, but they don't really know the story behind it. Yes. So I thank you for just delving in and kind of talking a little bit about that journey. And you said 20 years. Yes, sir. So, that, so you had to have a great deal of faith. Uh, if you would, can you expound a little bit on how important it is for you to ask God to strengthen your faith while you're building something at this magnitude that you built? Any vision, let's just say that, any vision. Yes. So it, it is a faith journey yeah. to leave home and transition to a new city that I know knew nothing about. Yeah. And to step out and go to school at age forty. That's faith. Yeah. Not even thinking about how I'm going to eat, how, where am I going to live. Yeah. That's faith. Yeah. But I believe in God so much so until I did not, it was like I was dissociated yeah. from the walk. I was moving, but I wasn't really paying a whole lot of attention. I was just going, just sure. moving forward. What yeah. I didn't think, what I, like when God told, uh, was it Abraham to, to move? Yeah. He moved. He moved. He moved. Yeah. You know, he didn't question. He just moved, start walking. So that's what, yeah. that's faith. We have to just start walking and trust yeah. that God's going to do just what he sent you out yes. to do. And he's yeah. done that. Yeah. You know, so you have to have faith. You have to really stay in your word. Mm. You have to do a lot of praying. Mm. You have to do a lot. And I've done a lot of crying. Oh, yeah. God win. Win, God win. <laughs> win, God win. God how long? Win. How God, long? How long? Exactly. So, um, yeah. but still, you get up, I'll dry your tears up, and you keep it you moving. You keep it moving. That's right. You know, uh, but it's, I mean, and God have to wait until we're ready. God yeah. knows when we're ready. Yeah. He knew, you know, 20, 15 years ago, I wasn't ready. Yeah. He knew that, but I'm thinking I am. I got my degrees. Come on, God, it's time to go. Yeah. You know, but what in time? Yeah, he wanted more. It was something else. Absolutely. That's something mm -hmm. how God works, yeah, too. One, <laughs> and one, you mentioned something I heard you say, uh, yeah. integrity. Yeah. You have to have integrity. Yeah. You yeah. have to be faithful. Yes. And see, God is looking for faithfulness. faithfulness and I've been man. faithful for 20 years yeah. without any evidence. Yeah. My dad would say every now and then, he'd say, when are you going to? Do that thing you talking about doing. I said, what thing? <laughs> he said, uh, working with the women. I said, Daddy, I'm working with them now. I said, you yeah. don't see it. I said, but I'm doing the best I can. Yeah. And we got, we uh, obtained a home mm. last year. February. In February, gotcha. we obtained a, a transitional home mm. to house five women. What was that like? Uh, what was that like? Man, I saw this. The this, first house. The, this, it's the first house. It is the first house. Well, so I, I guess I'm, I'm decreeing something, <laughs> declaring something in the atmosphere then. You just did. Okay. Hey, man. All right. All I right. I received that too. Yes, yes. So okay. So I saw it online. Yeah. It's for rent. Beautiful home. Yeah. And I went to see it in Immaculate Place. Mm. 
And I say, God, they're not going to let us put no women that have been in jail in this house. <laughs> I said, but I'm going to call anyway. And I That's had to right. be honest with the man. That's right. And I was so afraid of the no, yeah. but I was willing to accept the no if it was that. Absolutely. So I called the, the leasing agent and I asked him, say, um, told him my name, who I was and what I was trying to do. I'm just yeah. wondering if this guy, if the owner would allow us to use this for transition yeah. for women that's come out of jail and prison. Mm. And she said, I don't know. Mm. I'll call him. Yeah. And then I'll call you back. That's right. Five minutes. I'm still at the house looking around, ooh and ah, and wishing and hoping. <laughs> Lady calls back. She said, Miss Wells? He said, absolutely yes. Wow. Absolutely yes. Did you scream? I did. <laughs> <laughs> I shouted. I danced. Absolutely. I'm know, with you. Yeah. Because it was a blessing. And yeah. I knew right then mm -hmm. that the timing was on point. Yeah. And I go back to my dad. When I got the house, I called my dad and said, Daddy. We have a house. Mm. You got a house? I said, yes, sir. I said, come and see it. Took him over there. He said, what? He said, a few words. Said, I got I you. I don't I, I understand. Things. I understand. He said, all these years. <laughs> Lord, Emmer, I can't believe it. Yeah. I yeah. said, believe it. Yeah. You know, so that was exciting Absolutely. for him to even be here. Oh, I understand. But to hear me talk about something for so long. Mm -hmm. that had no evidence that it was the truth, yeah. and for him to be able to witness yeah. what his daughter is doing. This is absolutely beautiful, the importance of manifesting uh, something in the atmosphere, and you did. Mm -hmm. He was working all that time, as you stated before. You were operating in faith, still working with the ladies, operating in faith. Yes, sir. Uh, building the house, yeah. operating in faith. Yes, I mean, sir. everything you did was a faith walk. Yes, sir. And 20 years, and here we are now, and you got your first home, and we'll believe in God that you'll have another one. I received that. Yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. You're going to have a whole bunch of them. I received that. <laughs> sure do. So what kind, uh, what kind of support do you offer your residents, and how do you help them as they transition back into society? What is that process like? I mean, and who, and who, do, who all, do you take everyone in? I mean, like, Okay. Um, <laughs> so I'll start with the first one, and then we'll go back to that. Okay. okay. Now, I am a, cha a chaplain at the uh, Forsyth Detention Center. Okay. That's where I meet a lot of the women. Okay. Uh, from there, you know, I begin to build a relationship with the women, because, one, these women trust nobody. Sure. Nobody. Understood. Or nothing. Understood. And I get that. Yeah. So I build a trust and relationship with them, let them know I'm here, mm -hmm. and I'm going to be here. And then if I feel like they are a fit... If they really won't change, because mm. it's, it's left up to them, not me. That's right. I got the tool, but are you willing to yeah. accept the tools? Right. So I, I talk to them over a course of weeks while they're in that jail mm -hmm. and kind of, you know, read them and find mm. out where they're going and what they want. Sure. Um, when I feel like that a person is a good candidate, meaning I won't change. Mm. I desire change. Yeah. I am willing to change. That's right. Those things, when I hear that, and not necessarily the words, but when I hear that's, their heart, yeah, yeah. that's when they, they, they roll me in. Yeah. Because that's what I need to see. I need to see the heart. If you really feel that you want to change, if, is it really there? Yeah. Um, so well, I meet them at the jail, and, and I, uh, I don't do the application. I have a young lady do the application, have them call the house. Yes. Do the, it's an application process and an interview process. Okay. So when they're accepted, a lot of times I'll write letters to the courts, mm -hmm. get them, uh, if they're on probation, mm -hmm. sometimes they're ordered to come there, Okay, which, which is good. Yeah. And then sometimes they just want to come. They're not ordered to come. They just want to come. Sure. So we go through that. The first 90 days is very structured. Mm. It's very hard. It's very strict. Absolutely. We got rules on top of rules on top of rules. <laughs> right, right. Um, so, But the first 90 days, there's no... Now, throughout the program, the first six months, there are no requirements for them to pay anything. Okay, understood. So, because I don't want them to have to worry about trying to pay a debt when they don't have employment. Yeah, that's understood. So, the first 90 days, they do not work. Yeah. Um, they do not pay rent. They do not pay anything. Yeah. They are dependent upon the organization to take care of them. Yeah. And we do that. We provide, provide the food, clothing. Whatever they need, we provide that. Yes. And that's essential because, one, our focus is trauma. Yeah. A lot of the, mm. the majority of the women we work with 
have a trauma history or trauma experience. Sure. So we want them. We want to go back and help them heal That's right. from that trauma because that trauma have manifested into mental health. Mm. That's why you got a lot of people on mental health drugs, yeah. and really when they really shouldn't have been on it. Yeah. But trauma, it kind of mask. Mm. It's masked by the depression, mm-hmm. anxiety, yes. uh, schizophrenia, mm-hmm. what, yeah. all that stuff is yeah. masked. Mm-hmm. But underneath all of that depression and mental health is trauma. Yeah. And so the well center gets to the root cause, mm. which people are not doing that. Nah. And that's what I've been screaming at the community. Hey, y'all just y'all just scra- scraping the surface. Yeah. It's deeper than that. It's real deep. And y'all want to give a pill and say, okay, there you go. Yeah. You're yeah. going to be well. Yeah. They're not well because yeah. guess what? That trauma is still there. Yeah. So it's trauma focused. Yeah. And I'm, I am uh, experiencing trauma. Yeah. And that's my area. Trauma is my area. Yeah. So the first 90 days, it is a focus on self. Mm trying to find out and identify, trying to find their identity. Yeah. Find out who they are. Yes. Uh, what they want to be. So important. Yes, yes. And dealing with that, that past. <clears throat> yes. Um, and I always say a lot of times these women come off drugs. Yep. Um, and the drugs cause them to be in a numbing state mm-hmm. of, 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 of being. I know what you mean. And mm-hmm. they don't feel anything. They do yep. the drugs because they don't want to feel the pain. That's right. My, I come in, well, we're going to feel some stuff. Yeah. You know, and it's going to be hard. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, you're not going to want to do it because it's yeah. too difficult to go back and say what somebody did yeah. or what happened to yes. you. Yes. So we get into the root cause, and I have two women, which one will be speaking uh, the, today. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, n- mm-hmm. No medication. Mm. No medication. Mm. But we're still, we're still a work in progress. It's, sure. a, it's, it's a slow process. Yes. So the first 90 days say focus on self, focus on the trauma therapy. Yeah. Uh, they have a program. We have a, a, a schedule. Yeah. Monday through Friday. Mm-hmm. These ladies follow a schedule. They're not just sitting there twiddling their thumbs. Yeah. But they're working. They're working. They're working. Yeah. They're working. We have volunteers. Uh, the organization's made up of volunteers. We mm-hmm. have no paid staff. I don't get paid. I got you. Um, so, uh, but that's coming too. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, absolutely. Our volunteers come in to teach the women, walk with the women with spiritual health, uh, uh, physical health. Uh, mental health, yeah. all of, that. All of we, that. We we bring it all to them. I don't send no woman out. Go go down here to such and such street no, no, and no. get your therapy. No, he's no. in the house. We bring it to the house. That makes sense. Yeah. So the first yeah. ninety days is critical, um, and then after the, that ninety days, we we have partnered in with Project Reentry mm-hmm. um, in Winston Salem. Yep. And they uh, ask the ladies what kind of training for employment. Sure. They go through a training mm-hmm. for employment. Uh, we just had one young lady that just graduated culinary. Oh, awesome. And we sent her to Raleigh to get her certification in peer support. Oh, wow. She's doing her thing. Oh, I love and it. And she's currently the program director. Oh, she's earned man. that. She's been with us eight months, and now we're trying to get her to transition where she can own a home. Because of her record, Yeah, she cannot go get an apartment. She can't get on Section 8, yeah. so she has no choice. She has to buy something. she got to buy something. Yeah, yeah, so we're working with her now. She's working part-time outside the house. That's good. Um, but she's on her way. That's good. So we help them all the way from I start beautiful. to finish. Yeah. And, and after they get their training, they go. They get a little job. Yeah. You know, we don't push them too fast. That's right. Because I'm not focused <laughs> on money or any gain. Yes. My gain is help these la- ladies get what God got for them. That's right. You understand what I'm that's saying? That's right. So that's the thing. That'll come. Whatever God got for me, it's going to be for me. Oh, absolutely. You know, so a lot of people are, uh, are greedy. <laughs> it's about money. Yeah. What What am I going to get? Yeah. God will provide, and God have been doing that. Oh, so man. He's been providing everything that the well seller need. And, and I believe grateful. that. I believe that. And that's yeah. good because your focus is to help. Yes. To build up. Yes. And I also like the fact that you are actually protecting them. Absolutely. There's a protection element, too, that goes along with the Well Center because you're saying, listen, I understand. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to have them come here. You ain't leaving out of here. We're going to make sure you get everything. We don't need nobody triggering nothing. Yeah, abso- we don't need absolutely. you getting out there too soon. Yeah. So we're going to bring it in-house so yeah. you don't have to do that. And I, and I love the fact that you... Have, that you're providing that because that's necessary. It is. It's not saying that hey, I don't trust you, but right now, let's let's take it slow. Yeah. We'll bring it in house. 
Because right now, you probably don't trust yourself to walk down Absolutely. there and do what you say you're going to do. You might skip out and see something you like and skip out because you're not really ready yet. Yep. So yep. I like that. That's using wisdom, too, though. Yeah. But they, they, protection. They, the women struggle with it. <laughs> they, sure. they don't quite understand it. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah. So it, it's, it can be challenging at sure, times. You sure, know. sure, sure, sure. Um, quite first, natural. Yeah, the first yeah. three and a half weeks are all the hardest mm-hmm. um, because now it's like what I do, I sit here all day and do yeah. these books and do this. Yeah. I don't know about this. I yeah. need to be moving about in the earth. Well, you've moved in the earth. Yeah. Now you're here. Yeah. You know, yeah. so um, yes, yeah, to help them. Yeah, and they I, see it in the long run. Yeah, I think that's so. I think that's so important that you do sit. Sometimes you gotta sit still. Absolutely. I think it's a season where you do have to yes. sit down. God will sit you down. You don't need to go nowhere. Yeah. Pick up a book. Yep. Read that book. <laughs> Sometimes you gotta turn the TV off too. Oh, absolutely. Now they'll tell I you about the turn TV. That TV off too sometimes. <laughs> too, so. Yeah. So um, I, I think this is wonderful. I think it's great uh, what you're doing. And here's the last question I want to ask you before we bring uh, a young woman up who is uh, a benefactor of the program. And I'm super excited to speak with her in just a minute here. But uh, what do you hope to achieve through your work? And what impact do you feel? you're making on the lives of the women in your care and you might have answered it already but if you but if you want to go even deeper you can because you said a lot of good things uh, in moving forward you have man i just want to make a difference in somebody yeah. else's life yeah um i didn't have too much of that in my own life growing up mm-hmm. um i just want to help somebody i just yeah. have that heart and passion yeah um, because I just do. It's, yeah. it's just a great passion to help, yes. to give something back. Yes. Back, you know, and I haven't been where these ladies have been. I've never been incarcerated. I understand that. I've never been on drugs. Mm. But when I look back on my life <laughs> and think things over, yeah, I can surely say <laughs> <laughs> it could have been me. It could have been. But it wasn't. But it wasn't, yeah. And people wonder about that. It's like, how you... Mm. That's just what God got for me. That's right. You know, That's so right. just to just to make a difference in the lives of these women. Yeah. Help them make because I believe in them. When they don't believe in themselves, yes. Mr. Ross, yeah. I believe that they can have the good of the land like anybody else. Like anybody else. So just leaving that legacy and having given them something to hold on to mm. to let these women know that somebody genuinely cares. Yes. If they don't know anything else about Chaplain Wells or Miss Wells or whatever they call me, Black Mama or whatever, <laughs> they know that I love them. Absolutely. Hands down. And that goes you know, a long it, it, it way. It speaks volumes. Yes. It, it speaks volumes. Yes. Um, so they can experience what real love is. A yeah. lot of these women don't know what that is. Yeah. yeah. Have never experienced. So a lot yeah. of times it's hard to trust. Sure. Sure. But that that's, that's that's just what I want to leave. Yeah, yeah, and I, and you know what I th- I think you're doing that, um, and uh, we're going to hear from uh, like I said we're going to hear from a young lady who's a benefactor of that, and and she could speak to the experience of the love and the care that she's experienced and what she's feel and and, and what it's doing for her, yeah. how it's impacting her life. So, yes, sir. And uh, we're going to bring you right back up again, and then we're going to go ahead and talk to. Uh, I think her name is Brandy, correct? It is is Brandy. Okay, so Mm -hmm. we'll go ahead and transition and bring Brandy right on in. Hey, Becky, how are you? Brandy. Brandy. I done called (laughs) you (laughs) Becky. Please keep that in there. Forgive me. You're good. Your name is Brandy. Yeah. And you are absolutely a benefactor of the Well Center. And I I really do appreciate you coming on uh, board and the confidence that you're showing now to just do this. That speaks volumes. So I want to know from you, how how has this impacted? How's the Well Center, this transition, this transitional home, how is it how has it impacted you in your life? It has impacted me drastically. Um, I'm 40 years old. I've been um, an addict for a little over 20 years. I've been in and out of jail and prison yeah. and I was in Forsyth County Jail. Yeah. And I was facing a lot of years in prison. Yeah. And um, that's where I met Chaplain Peggy Wells. And I had knew about the Wells Center. 
and so we talked a few times and um she told me you know when i got out that i was accepted into the program yeah so i went straight from jail to the house Mm -hmm. Um, when i walked in i was blown away i was like wow it's it's beautiful yeah Yeah. um it's homey it's peaceful yeah it's comfortable yeah um at first i was you know i didn't know what to expect or you know what was about to happen but Mm -hmm. um since i've been there i've been through trauma therapy I have um, some of the programs and some of the ladies that come in, you know, Mm -hmm. um, do Bible studies. It's faith-based. Yeah. Um, We do Purpose and Power of Women, and it pretty much speaks for itself. Mm -hmm. um, You know, it tells you your purpose and um, the reason God made you a woman. Yeah. Um, We do Battlefield of the Mind, um, Living Beyond Your Feelings. You learn a lot about yourself and who you are. Yeah. Um, When I first talked to... Uh, Miss Wells, I told her I didn't have any trauma. I was good. <laughs> and she was like, well, something come from somewhere. <laughs> um, yeah, I didn't think that I had anything going on. Like, maybe a couple little things might have happened, but sure, no, it was sure. way more than that. Way, yeah. way more than that. Yeah. Um, so I've learned a lot about my past that I didn't even realize. Mm-hmm. Um, I've learned a lot about who I am. Mm-hmm. Um, I've been there for a little over two months. Um, yeah. I feel like a different person. I feel alive. Mm-hmm. Um I love her very much. She's definitely been a blessing. Yeah. Um, she's taught me a lot about myself. Yeah. I can trust her. I can talk to her about anything. Yeah. Even when I don't feel like I've done right or it wasn't right, I can still be honest. Yeah. Um, um, I don't know where I would be if it wasn't for the house and for her. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. But um, I'm getting ready to go to orientation because I don't have a high school diploma, so I'm getting ready to go to orientation for school, and then I'll start school in August. Congratulations. Yeah, yeah. and then I'll probably be getting, like, a little part-time job or something outside yeah. the house. But yeah. Um, yeah. it's definitely changed my life. Like, yeah. like I said, I'm 40 years old. Yeah. And, you know, I've, throughout the years I've wanted to get clean, and I've wanted to have a better life, but I didn't know how to do it. Mm-hmm. I didn't know where to start or what to do. Or, yeah. And she's definitely been there every step of the way yeah well well i'm going to encourage you man it's just going to get better from here it's just going to get better brandy i promise you um and i'm so glad that you're linked up like i said when, when, as you were sitting here the confidence mm-hmm. you know most people wouldn't be able to do this in the beginning especially um uh everything that you've gone through the fact that you were bold enough to say um i was an addict that speaks volumes. That says that I'm taking accountability for my actions. I understand what happened. I understand where I'm going. Just what you said. I know who I am. Man, you've already won, in my opinion. Thank you. Most people don't even know who they are. And I'm speaking from experience, and I'm really trying not to get like, too emotional because I'm a, I'm a guy that cries. So, oh, I cry a lot, too. I'm yeah, not a little better about yeah, that. Yeah, man. But, but, you know, I, I get it. I understand it, and as you were talking, I could feel that, you know, it, and it feels good to get a second chance. Feels yeah, good. it's definitely a blessing. Um, yeah. You know, I built a relationship with God, and I've started to believe. Um, used yeah. to, I'd be like, oh, here we go again. I don't want to <laughs> hear it. But now um, I listen to everything yeah, yeah. that the ladies come in and teach and Absolutely. everything that I hear Chaplain Will say, yeah. and um, God has definitely made yeah. a way for me. Yeah. And, you know, I'm just getting better. That's like right. I said this morning on the way here, you know, I'm where I am now. Yeah. It's a lot further than where I was. That's right. And I'm not where I was at the very beginning. That's right. That's right. And I'm just looking forward. There's no looking back. Well, listen, Brandy, you stay focused because I do believe you're in good hands. Oh, absolutely. Uh, absolutely. Uh, can you talk a little bit more about the love that you feel? As uh, stated before, Ms. Wells was talking about her goal is to uh, make sure that everyone just feels love. From day one, I felt like I'd know her, known her my whole life. Like, um, she always comes in arms wide open. Yeah. You know, she gives you everything that you need. Um, she's always there. If you got a problem every day, hey, how are you? Yeah. Good. No, really, how are you? <laughs> and if you got a problem, you know, she's there. Right. Um, right. She's just a blessing in so many ways. Yeah. Like, I've never met anybody like her. Absolutely. Probably never will. She'll always be a big part of my life for sure. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. And and lastly, I won't I won't hold you here too much longer. If you could say something to someone who may be having some issues, maybe struggling, even though you're still going through your process of healing and change, 
but you you accomplished quite a bit. The fact that you're on this platform and you're talking about it says that you have something to say to someone that can help them become better. So if you would, I'll allow you to take this time, if you would, to say something that could change somebody's life just the way yours is being changed at this moment. Um, and not to quit and give up. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, there's life out there. Um, there's always a way. You just got to find it. There's somebody out there, you know, that cares. Um, you know, you have to believe to have faith. Yeah. And you believe in God and you get in his word and he'll show you the way and he'll help you along. Yeah. Um, everybody makes mistakes. That's but right. But you can always come back from them and you're always forgiven. Yeah. Um, you know, just always believe that you can actually reach that place. I never thought that I would be where I am now. Mm -hmm. You know, I always mm -hmm. thought, well, I want to do it, but there, it's impossible. I can't. Yeah. I'm too old or <laughs> I've been doing this for too long. Yeah. You, mm -hmm. I can't change my behaviors, but it's it's possible. Yeah, yeah. Um, you're never too old or too far gone. That's right. It's never too late to become Absolutely who you want to be. That's right. I don't and know if you'll get as lucky as I did with Chaplain Wells, <laughs> but there's somebody out there. I don't know, but there's somebody out there. Oh, I love it. I love it. And, and again, thank you for spending a little bit of time with us to kind of tell us about your experience at the, um, at the Wells Center and, and how you are a benefactor, a huge benefactor of all of the beautiful resources that, uh, that you've been given and, and still still being a, a benefactor of it and so I'm i want every day yeah that's right so i want to say to you thank you i want to say to you i'm proud of you thank you thank uh, you keep, for having me yeah and don't quit keep going oh, and it's just gonna not. get better oh, from she here. don't let you quit oh you that's right i don't want to quit but she ain't gonna <laughs> let me quit we're too far into this now so i want to tell you thank you brandy all right oh, and thank you i wish you the best thank you wish you the best So as you can see, folks, um, the Well Center has, ah, oh man, it's everything that you thought it was just from the conversation that we've had with Miss Peggy Wells from the beginning. And, you know, listen, uh, do you guys take donations of any sort? Can you guys take donations? How, how can the folks donate and actually be a part of what you guys have going on? For financial do donations, you could go to our website, www.thewellcenter.org. Yeah. Um, we're, we're not taking many clothes. We've got more clothes than we know <laughs> what to do with. Right, so right. we are asking for financial support. Yes. If you want to support this organization and support these women, yes. uh, we welcome that. Uh, yeah. no, amount, no amount is too small. That's right. Um, that's right. So that's the need. All right, there you have it. And we want to say again, thank you. How can the folks follow you? Uh, are you on Instagram or Facebook? We're on Facebook. Okay, uh, how can the folks uh, go and uh, like your page on Facebook, or do you have to be kind of careful with that? Uh, I'm, not sure. I'm not. Okay, understood. Technology is savvy. Yes. So you're going to find the Well Center on Facebook. Okay. And, um, and of course, your website, as you stated before. So we'll make sure we put all of that up so the folks can get in contact with you all okay. and possibly help with some financial donations. We're believing that someone will start, you know, sowing even more seeds of money <laughs> to be a, a huge help to the organization as well, to the ladies that you yes. are supporting as well. Yes, so, um, uh, Peggy, I want to tell you again, thank you for the work that you're doing in the community. Um, you know, sometimes we don't see those, un you know, those unsung heroes and, yes. And I have to say that you're one of those heroes. Just hearing from uh, Brandy a few minutes ago, uh, it, it's a true testament of the work that you're doing in the community. And I want to tell you that I'm proud of you, and I want to say thank you. Thank you. For everything that you're doing in the community. Mr. Ross, thank you so much, and thank you for having me. Absolutely. You're welcome. Listen, I hope that you guys have heard something today that can help you become better. This is the Ross Cloud Podcast. I'm Carl Ross Sr. Make it a great day. And keep being great. Peace.